Hey, what's going on guys? It's Divine, and today we're taking a look at one of the Steam's newest early access games called Valheim. Now this game has risen in popularity over the past couple weeks, and I thought I'd do a video because uh, if you do start playing this game, you will notice that this game doesn't hold your hand very nicely. Uh, the early stages of the game are a little bit confusing, so I thought I'd do a video on, you know, tips and tricks and kind of how to play the game in the first couple zones uh, just so you have a better play experience. So without further ado, we're just gonna jump right in. All right, so jumping right in, we're gonna start taking a look at our HUD. So you'll notice at the top left, you'll have a uh, torch with the number one. Now you get this starting off and this is going to be your hot bar. So this will expand when you fill it up, but initially you're only gonna see the number one, which correlates to the number one on your keyboard and it goes from one to eight. And then if we turn our attention to the right corner, we'll see our mini map. Now you'll notice that there's a fog of war on that already. Um, so that actually goes away as you explore the map. And if you want to see the full map, all you have to do is press the M key. Now, one thing to note with this is you only see your own map. So any little icons or anything like that you put on your map, you're the only one who can see that. So if you guys are in a server together with your friends or anything like that, you're going to actually have to take screenshots of your map to share with the group so that they can see what you've explored and you can see what they've explored. All right, so the bottom left corner now is the last part of the HUD that we're going to explain. So you'll see three boxes, a fork, and a red symbol. So those three boxes, which we'll explain further detail later on in the video, but basically that's going to show you the last three foods that you've eaten. Uh, the fork is actually going to be kind of your time of how long your food's going to be lasting. Uh, it just kind of gives you a little bit of an indicator of how much food um, you still kind of have left. And the red symbol is going to be your health which will always be a base of 25. All right so now that we have a base understanding of what is on our screen let's take a look at our inventory screen which we will open up using the tab button. All right, so now that we have our inventory open, you will notice at the top left, that is our inventory screen. So like I stated before, your hotkeys are one through eight. You can click and drag any item in there to use the item itself. Um, and then the rest of it is open for anything you wanna fill your inventory with. Um, off to the side of this screen, you'll notice a little shield. Now that is a related to how much armor you're actually wearing. And the item below, or actually the symbol below that is how much your weight capacity is. So please note that in this game, there is a certain level of weight that you can hold. Now moving off to the right, you will notice there's a couple different icons here, and if we hit the compendium, now that's going to be actually the bird that you're gonna see flying around in the beginning stages. If you happen to miss it, anything that he states, this is where you're gonna actually find those messages again. All right, so moving on to our second icon here, this is actually gonna be the levels of your skills. So you'll notice throughout the game, if you do anything, you're gonna improve your skills like I just did from jumping. So these will actually show up the more skills that you learn and also show you how close you are to leveling them. And moving on to the third icon, which is the trophy section. This will actually populate with the monsters and trophy heads that you kill um, and pick up from those monsters. Now, this will make a little bit more sense the more you play because any, basically any monster in the game can actually drop a trophy for you. And then moving on to our last icon, this is actually going to be how you enable and disable PvP mode. So not really too much to explain there, just you basically click it to turn it on or disable it. So moving on now, we're going to go ahead and press the M button, which is actually going to bring up our map. So I wanted to explain this a little bit more in detail of what you can see. So as you can see, when you first start out, basically nothing is explored. All we have is a small little circle, which will get bigger the more we run around. Um, but you will see a few icons off to the right and uh, one that actually I just enabled here called visible to other players. So if you're playing on a server with other friends of yours or anybody else, um, you basically want to make yourself visible on the map. Now you don't have to do this. If you don't want people to know where you are, all you have to do is simply uncheck that box. Um, but it puts the same little red symbol with your name on the map. 
And then moving on, you'll see those icons off to the right. Now those are actually map markers. So all you have to do is basically just click on what icon you want to place down. Um, so I guess we could just go ahead and place a little dot here and then you would just click and then it's going to give you a text box to basically label that. Now if you don't like what you put down, uh, you, all you have to do is right click to remove it or if you left click it once it'll actually put a little X like that um, letting you know say if you're marking a mining spot or something like that to let you know that you've already hit it before. Alright, so now that we have a better understanding of the HUD in the game, what we're taking a look at now is the actual starting area of where you're going to start in the game. Now, these rune stones um, may look a little bit confusing. Uh, I know it was for me because it really doesn't explain it too well, but what they relate to is each of the bosses in the game. So, starting with the glowing one, that is actually going to be a locator for the boss in your biome. Now, you'll find these scattered throughout each biome, um, and they can actually basically put a screen marker on your mini map of where the boss is going to be but one thing to note is that you can find multiple of these for the same boss but they might be in different spots of where to summon the boss on the map so sometimes you'll find one that's a little bit far away so you need to find one that's a little bit closer to wherever you build your base and then to explain the other ones of those bigger rune stones around. So when you do defeat a boss, what it actually gives you is a trophy. Now you can put these trophies on these runes and these runes will actually give you different powers. Now I'll probably explain this later on in a different video, but I just wanted to let you know that that's what this whole starting area is. And another thing to note is that you cannot build within a little bit of a width around these stones. They're kind of just blocked off so you can't build a house right in the middle of that so just a little warning when you first try to build if it keeps showing red or anything like that and you get a little frustrated of why you can't build there that is probably most likely why all right so now that we know where we are in the map uh what we're gonna do is open up our tab again and actually talk about crafting now i kind of glanced over this initially but i want to go more into depth now so that menu off to the right you'll notice that it's blank so I mean, how do you make anything? So if you've, you can see the bird with the exclamation mark now, he will kind of hint and tell you how to build the initial tools. But what I'm gonna do is actually show you how to do this. All right, so getting out of our crafting menu, these are the few things that you're gonna be wanting to look for. So above us is actually a branch, which is actually gonna give us wood. And then off to the slightly right of that is actually a rock. So what you can do with these items is just pick them up with the letter E on your keyboard. Now this just assumes that you're playing with the keyboard. Um, and then it'll actually populate your menu. So what we'll go ahead and do is just pick up this branch, which will give us wood and new materials and new crafting recipes. So when you do find different items throughout the world, um, they will actually just, you automatically learn those recipes related to those items. So what you'll want to do real quick is actually just run around that starting area and kind of collect a few of these things. But if you open up your tab menu, you're going to see different items that you can actually build. So what I'd advise when you start off is building all three of these items and, um, it shouldn't take you too long, maybe just a couple minutes just to run around, but it can be kind of hard to find those rocks initially. I know certain biomes, um, the starting areas, uh, they just tend to be kind of hidden a little bit more than others. So uh, like I said, just hunt those down and build those initial tools. So one thing I did want to mention while you're out and about scavenging materials, you might find bushes like this filled with raspberries. Now, if you do just go ahead and press E and pick them up. What these are are your food. So they're very important in this game. Um, one thing to note in this game that's kind of weird is even though you might pick up three raspberries, you're only allowed to eat one until that food expires on you. So you'll notice that these items have weight, health, stamina, duration, and healing. So weight similar, uh, kind of simple. It'll just fill up your weight of your inventory that has the 300. 
Your health is how much additional on top of that 25 it's going to give you. Stamina is how much additional stamina you're going to get. So definitely eat some food if you find it out there. It'll give you a bigger stamina bar. Um, there's also some things we'll talk about in a little bit um, that can actually help that even more. Um, but one thing to note is the tick eating or the tick HP per tick. Um, <clears throat> so you only gain one as you can just see there on the screen. It's very light off of your character, but it'll only heal me one every few times. A uh, few seconds. I don't know the actual tick rate of how many seconds per tick, but if you eat different kinds of food, um, some of the foods actually heal you quite a bit uh, per tick. So it's just good to eat those. Um, another food that you might find on the ground is mushrooms. Now mushrooms are pretty good. Um, again, they're very similar to the raspberry where they're not gonna heal you a lot or anything like that, but they will give you a little bit of stamina. And like we can see here, their weight is at 1.1 because we have 11 of them and they're only 0.1 per. So uh, you might find these more in abundance than over the raspberries. And then the third food in the starting area other than honey, which we can show in just a little bit, are these boars, which will actually give you raw meat. Now, make sure to kill these boars. They're not too tough, um, but they will give you scrap leather, which you can actually use to make um, armor for yourself. But we'll go into this in just a little bit more detail of how you can go about, you know, making more advanced items and how to cook the meat. So as I stated while we were killing that boar that there actually are um, beehives. Now you might find these in these kind of buildings like I'm showing you here. Make sure that if you're going to actually, um, you know, knock these hives down. So you do have to knock the hive down to get the honey out of it. And you will also get a queen bee. Now queen bees allow you to make beehives yourself. But the honey is actually a very important ingredient. But I will say that the queen bee is probably the most important thing. Um, early on in the game, I usually would recommend avoiding them until you have a bow. Because they will spawn a bunch of bees to attack you. So it can be a little rough in the beginning and like I said if you find them uh, littered around just kind of stay away from them and until you have a bow that you can shoot them from far away and stay safe. So now that we've talked about the boars and the bees, which sounds like a weird sexual metaphor for some reason, uh, the next NPC that we're going to take a look at is the deer. So the deer are what actually, once you kill them, you're going to learn the recipe for the bow. Um, killing the deer is very hard uh, initially, I would say. Um, one thing that it doesn't really teach you is that you can sneak up on deer. So you do this by pressing control, and then you'll have to sneak up behind the deer. I would recommend having a club. Now, if you struggle with this message, uh, method and the deer keep getting spooked like they do, um, one easier way to do this is actually to find a couple deer that are near water. Now, you can kind of chase and corral them into water and if you can get them into the water what it actually does is slow them way down and if you can get near the edge of it you can actually club them pretty easily that's kind of how i did initially um and that's just kind of the one trick that i found that really helps until you get a bow that you can shoot them um because like i said they do get scared quite quickly and pretty far away all right, so we have the last NPC that you're going to encounter in the meadows biome, and that is the Grayling. Now, these guys aren't very tough. They will come and attack you, uh, but the one drop that they do have as he walks off the screen on me um, is the resin. Now, that allows you to build torches, and it's pretty useful, um, I guess, while you're building at night and everything, just to keep the area lit, which is pretty cool. Uh, one thing to note with all monsters is some of them will have stars above their head or next to their name actually. Uh, what these stars indicate is how powerful they are, how many hits uh, they can basically take, uh, so their HP, and then how much of a drop they actually have. So if you have one star they double the drop, if you have two stars they actually have four times the drop. So just a little bit of information for you guys there, um, but like I said they're not too tough couple whacks with your club should take them out pretty easily. 
All right, guys, so on to the building section of our guide here. So what we're going to go ahead and do is just hit tab. And the one thing that you guys are going to want to build is this hammer. Now, this is pretty easy to get if you guys are scavenging early on. You're just going to need three wood and two stone. And um, basically, as soon as you get that, you're just going to hit that tab menu, craft menu, and select that hammer and craft it. All right, so now that we have the hammer, what we're going to go ahead and do is what we're, we want to build a workbench. Now, this is going to allow us to build all our buildings and give us more basically crafting items that we can do within a given area. So all I did is have the hammer out and we're just going to right click. Um, we're going to select the workbench and place it. So that's instantly going to give us the ability to place pretty much anything we want to build in a circular area so you can kind of see that white line all the way dotted around um, when you get closer so you can go all the way up to the white line and build out um, as far as it will let you which is about that far but if i were to step out it would tell me that the uh, basically at the bottom it says workbench none so we would need to take a step back so that kind of tells you how far you can go but one thing that's useful with the workbench is it's going to allow you to repair your tools but as you can see here when you try to use it the crafting station needs a roof so this is where it can kind of get a little bit finicky guys so i'm going to build a wall here um we're going to try to get it as close as possible to the workbench let it snap and i'm just simply rotating these blocks with the middle mouse button here um, and then we're going to take these 26 oops uh and then if you guys mess up at all just feel free to the default uh, button is actually the middle mouse button wheel if you click down it will actually remove the item so you can set this to whatever you want but what we did is we placed four walls um, a 26 inch angle and a 26 inch degree roof so we'll see if it allows us to use the workbench and it does um, one thing to note here guys is sometimes it will say that it still doesn't like it so all you need to do um, especially if it's raining out or anything add another section of roof and usually that can resolve your issue uh, if it still doesn't feel free to just break down the workbench itself and actually rebuild it um, and maybe just try to move it in slightly more into there and see if that will fix your problem all right so moving on the next thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and craft ourselves a hoe now this item takes five wood and two stone to build all right, so now that we are having the hoe built, because I already had one in my inventory, I didn't want to go ahead and just build another one. What I really want to mention here is the first thing that you're going to want to do is probably do some leveling of the ground, but that's not all you can actually do with that. You can actually raise the ground and build a dirt path, and that's what these two other options are for. Um, but like I said before, um, the biggest one that you're going to really be using is the level ground command. All right, so emphasizing a little bit more on this leveling the ground, the first thing to note is that this game is going to level the ground up to where you're standing. And also just one simple click with the hoe doesn't necessarily mean that the ground is going to be perfectly level either. So it's a good thing to note that you may have to spam this button a, you know, a few times while you're clicking around just to get everything perfect. And we can see that, you know, this item isn't, fully level by there's actually a bar right in the middle of the circle so this is typically you know like spamming the button like that can kind of help give you your level but you can see this line as you kind of move around it kind of goes up and down up and down uh sorry we're just trying to get here all right so there's a good you know view and we could just click and spam it um but you just want to make sure that you don't go outside of where you already previously have level because as you see as i drag this all around there is that line and that line is stating that there is unequal ground at some point in this so your area of you know leveling the ground is in that circle and it will use stamina so it is good to have a full rested bonus uh, a lot of food eaten and everything like that that way you can just click and spam this to kind of level out a very good chunk of area very quickly 
All right, so now that we've learned how to level out the ground, what we've gone here and done is actually leveled out a nice little space here. Um, and now I'm going to be showing you guys how to build a house. Now, this house is going to require about 100 wood and 5 stone. So pretty easy. Um, this house will actually allow you to kind of expand it just a little bit, you know, get a good rested buff. Um, we'll kind of go over that later on in some different videos that I have planned explaining you know rested buffs different foods things like that but what you're going to want to head go ahead and do actually is start off with a workbench right over here um, and then you're going to build six floors now you're not going to want this workbench inside just yet uh, build these six floors and then what we're going to go ahead and do is build a campfire so we want the campfire in one of the middle squares either either side it doesn't matter and then you're going to just want to find where the blue square is and then just place it just outside of that. And then from here, what you can actually go ahead and do is build your workbench. So we want the workbench off to the side and we're just gonna kind of get it as close to the edge as possible. And that means that we can go ahead and destroy that one. Um, and this allows us to continue to keep building in this area. And then for the bed, what we're gonna wanna do is get it as close to the workbench as possible. And that's just gonna give you more room to kind of build um, additional storage or anything like that. Um, going on from here, what we'll go ahead and do is just build some walls. Um, for the fire though, this is where it gets a little picky because there is uh, smoke um, within the game. So we want to go ahead and do two half walls here. And we're basically just going to build a chimney. So we're going to get to 26 inch. Uh, so similar to when we built the crafting bench, we're just going to go ahead and here and try to get these to snap up here. Um, and then guys, if you have any problems, feel free to just kind of work on the workbench, but sometimes it can get a little bit picky on, you know, getting that snap point just right and just add a 26 uh, degree thatch roof. So that's going to give us adequate airflow, um, to allow the smoke to escape. And then from here, all you're going to do is actually just snap the walls right into place here. And like I said, you're going to need about a hundred wood for this and five stone. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and build a wall right here. And then lastly is your door. So this door can actually be pulled out just slightly if you want. You can have it flush or you can have it one, uh, basically one little like notch inwards. So I like to do it about even. It really doesn't matter. It's up to your personal reference or preference. Sorry. Um, and then what we're going to go ahead and do is do wood walls at 45 degrees. So we want one on top. And then we're going to go ahead and spin it around and do the same thing for the other side here. Um, and then there we go. And then we're just going to go ahead and take these thatch roofs and pretty much that easy guys. Um, and then we can already see that we're getting that rested buff here. And then there you go, you have a house. Now, if you have a couple additional pieces of wood, go feel free to build a cooking station. What I recommend is actually do it closer to you as possible. Um, it still needs to be over the fire for it to cook, but you don't want it so far in that the meat, when it's done cooking, it will kind of launch those uh, towards the back end of things. And sometimes you can get burnt if you're trying to get them. Um, and then to go ahead and expand this, um, if we want to add some storage in here, what we can go ahead and do is actually just build a storage chest. Now, I would recommend actually building it a little bit out and closer to the door. We can see about there. And you can actually fit another one right here since we have the bed over here. So let me just go get a little bit more wood. I have a bunch stored over here. Um, and like I said, guys, uh, store up on your wood. It's definitely helpful, but we'll go ahead and put a storage chest right there. Now, if we had additional wood or anything like that, we can go ahead and actually build more storage within our house. So we can do about three on either side here, but all you have to do to do this is do a one by one floor, uh, slightly above the chest, and then we can actually place a chest right above it. And then if you don't like that, or actually, if you don't like the little wood piece right there, uh, feel free to just kind of knock it out and it will stay. And then there you go. 
you have three chests, some nice storage, um, a little house that you can expand upon. Um, like I said, one in our future videos, we'll kind of go more into the comfort and rested. Um, but this house will be perfect for the initial game. Pretty easy to build, especially if you're kind of roaming around and being in adventure and you have your workbench that you can repair items from as well. So that's all I wanted to show you guys in this video before we get too in depth. Uh, the next video will be going more on the black forest area instead of just the meadows and we'll be diving into a few more advanced topics talking more about what the enemies you're going to be encountering and kind of how to defeat those bosses so if you guys like this video feel free to like comment and subscribe and i will see you guys in the next one